So in this video, I'll teach you how to airbrush realistic looking chrome. I've got a job for a customer that he wants this chrome emblem to be airbrushed on there rather than the emblem stuck on the side of the tank, and, uh, but he wants it to look as realistic as possible. So um, he let me borrow one of the emblems and I took it outside in some pretty cool light and took a whole bunch of reference photos and I found the one I like the best, which is this one here. And so I'm going to use Adobe Illustrator and draw um, vector file, vector lines around some of these key features. Um, that's not gonna be in this video. I do have other videos on how to use Adobe Illustrator, but I just wanted to show you what I was going to use as my reference. I've got it put in the background. I'm just gonna use the drawing tools, tools in Adobe Illustrator to do the perimeter and then some of these key areas um, that have some hard masked off lines. And so I'll get started. And then uh, after I draw the file up, I'll show you what the file is going to look like before I send it to my plotter. Okay, I've got this vector file drawn up in Adobe Illustrator. And so if I zoom in for you, you can kind of see um, I've got the outer perimeter, but I've got all the detail of the chrome in there. So I picked out from the reference anything that looked like somewhat of a hard line and the different color variations. And I put that in there in the vector file. So all that will get cut out with a razor blade. And after I did that, I removed all the inside and cut out just a perimeter because I'm going to mask that off and spray it white first, let it dry, and then I'm going to back mask with this on the inside. So you could do this without a plotter. You could uh, cut this out. You could print this out on a piece of paper, sketch it out, and then cut it out with an X-Acto blade too. Um, I just have the plotter here and it comes out real nice and crisp, um, especially if you're gonna, um, when you back mask something and all this stays down perfectly so you don't have any uh, overspray lifting up or anything. So I'll send that to my plotter and get it cut out. All right, so I sent that file I showed you on the screen to my plotter. It's just a low tack stencil vinyl, and uh, it's like a printer with a razor blade in it. So it's just cutting out those contours I showed you on the screen. All right, you can see I've laid out the vinyl here. This is a black motorcycle tank. And so I laid out the outside vinyl, I taped it all off, and I airbrushed it white. Um, I airbrushed it thicker white in the middle and lighter white around the edge just because if you airbrush really heavy around the edge you can see that edge when you go to peel everything off and when you clear coat it so that'll still look plenty bright even though it's not quite as thick of white around the edge but uh, anyway so that's just white then I sprayed just a little bit of uh, inner coat clear coat over the top of that and I'm gonna let it dry before I back mask with the rest of the vinyl All right, while that paint and intercoat clear coat dries, I'll take the other part of my vinyl stencil. This is the inside part of it that's got all the details for the chrome in there. So I am going to weed out the outside of this. Basically look all right, I'm ready to start here. First, I'm gonna take the uh, vinyl stencil that I cut all the way around the perimeter, and I'm gonna put it in here, and I'm gonna line it up as best as I can. Once that looks good, I'll tape it down double check everything I'll put another piece of tape here this is my reference I'm going to use to look at while I paint so I'm going to peel this backing paper off and I'm going to put this down working from the center out 
try to get no wrinkles, and then trying to make sure that it's fitting perfectly inside the outer vinyl. Remove the tape. I'll remove the backing paper or the uh, transfer tape. Apologize. It's hard to get a hold of, especially since you trimmed it really tight to the edge. Just lightly cut through it, not into the vinyl, and then you can kind of get it to lift off. Time to start throwing some pink down here. So again, I've got black first. I've weeded out the majority of all the black from the stencil. So I'm just going to kind of, kind of come in here. And, oh, I used this for details last, so I'm going to add some more black to make it thicker. Right now it's over-reduced for fine, fine details. So I'm adding some more Inspire black base. Shake that up. There, now we'll cover faster. 